This week we learned about clustering, and in particular with clustering we're trying to form groups or cluster uh, based on the measurements within the data itself, um, or, or the measurements of uh, similarity within the, uh, the data. Uh, it's, it's called unsupervised learning because we don't have labels that tell us what cluster it should be in. Uh, we don't have anything that tells us the truth because we're trying to discover that as we, as we go. Um, this data, for example, um, we can have a number of different clusters. We have 21 instances with this uh, data. So we can have 21 clusters, although that wouldn't make sense because um, then every instance would have its own cluster. And that's not the objective of clustering, you know, it's to form groups. Um, in this particular example, we're going to start off with two, and then we can um, increase and to determine what makes sense. Um, usually you use some form of uh, domain knowledge to, de to determine what, how many clusters you need. So let's begin. Um, we're going to go to Excel Miner, and this is the pharmaceutical uh, database. Uh, with this data set here, you have uh, the stock symbol. Here you have the uh, company name. You have the market capitalization, how much, um, how big the company is in billions of dollars, uh, the beta, the price to earnings ratio, return over equity, um, return on assets, um, asset turnover, um, you leverage, um, um, how, how, how much money it's making, and the exchange of what it's trading on. So let's start with, um, we're going to use this here, this clustering. We've never used that before. And here what I've done is I've just included only the, um, the numerical um, from C to a K. And I'm just going to cluster on those. And this is the K-means cluster, um, K-means algorithms that, that we're using. I'm going to go to Next. And I'm going to say normalize uh, the input data. Now, the reason why you would do this is because um, without normalization, for example, um, the variable with the largest uh, number um, will dominate the measure. And so with uh, normalization, you're just normalizing the data, um, getting into a normal distribution. And so it's to ensure that the distance measured is um, gives equal weight to uh, each variable. Um, otherwise, you would have something like market capitalization would receive the, um, the most emphasis because the numbers are the largest. With normalization, um, these would all be very similar in, in, the, in the measurement. Okay, here, so I, I clicked on normalize input measure, in, in, input, um, uh, normalize input data. I'm going to say number of clusters is two. Um, this is domain knowledge. Um, and this, or it can just be an estimate. We're going to start off with two. We're going to see if it makes sense, if the clusters make sense with the data. And then if it doesn't, well, we can increase it. Uh, from there. I'm going to say next, and I'm going to click each one of these and say finish. So the first thing that you would do is you would look here at the cluster centers, and with a clustering you're trying to explain the data. You're trying to, dis you're trying to see if, if the clusters make sense. Um, so for example here we have uh, cluster 1 and we have cluster 2. Um, and this explains the um, mean for for the uh, for this particular uh, cluster. So this one here, a cluster one has a mean of 14.2 for the market capitalization, and for cluster two, it has a mean of uh, 97. So it looks like it's given this quite a bit of uh, weight. Um, and then we're gonna just we're gonna try to describe just in kind of just in normal everyday language what each one of these clusters mean. So for example for cluster 1 we could say this one has um, a, this cluster has a small capitalization stocks um, that are quite expensive because the price to earnings ratio is quite high the return on investment or return on equity is uh, quite low and um, it does not make all that much profit uh, cluster 2, to describe this, 
um, this would be uh, companies that have very high capitalizations um, that are not very expensive when it comes to the price to earnings um, so the price it's price over earnings and um, so the, the the price is quite low compared to the the uh, earnings that it makes the return on investment or return on equity is quite high return on uh, assets is it's quite a bit higher than, than cluster two now of course I have domain uh, knowledge uh, within this um, uh, this cluster so I'm, I'm gonna have an easier time to describe it but uh, that's that's how you would start off with clustering and describing what the clusters mean um, you don't just um, usually you just don't um, just report the data itself you uh, d try to describe you, you report the data but then you also try to describe it and possibly name those clusters according to something that makes sense the second page uh, shows us how each uh, instance uh, was uh, was labeled now I don't in, I haven't included the um, uh, you know, the, um, um, the the the, um, the the name of the stock and so I'm gonna do that right now I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna copy yes you know, copy these two two rows or two um, columns and then I'm just gonna insert it Insert. Oops. insert it right there okay so okay so this here would tell us that uh, Abbott Labs is in cluster number two um, yeah, another cluster number two is AstraZeneca Zeneca, um, and Bristol Myers uh, and, and these so this this it's highlighted here because it's in cluster two and these are in cluster one Thank you. Oh, but also, um, we're, we're going to look here to determine whether or not we're happy um, or if we should increase to this to maybe a, a cluster again and, and determine if we should have a three clusters or four clusters or five. Um, we don't want too many clusters. We want to make sure that each one of these clusters has a s s um, significant amount of uh, observations. So in this one here, you can see in cluster one we have uh, ten observations, in cluster two we have eleven. So that looks um, you know, quite even, of course. Um, if we start increasing the number of clusters, of course, each cluster would have uh, less. Um, but we also want to make sure that it makes sense according to us. You know, according to our domain knowledge, if I added a, a third cluster, doesn't make sense. Can I can I describe it in, in everyday language? If all of a sudden uh, the difference between cluster two and cluster three are, are very very small um, as far as the description of the uh, attributes, then it's probably not needed to have a third cluster. So um, that's that's that. Thank you.